Saint Augustine of Hippo was an esteemed late 4th and early 5th century Christian bishop in present-day Algeria. He became Bishop of Hippo, an ancient seaport city, in his early 40s and remained in the position for the rest of his life. Known as one of the greatest Christian philosophers, Saint Augustine was a prolific writer with about 100 books, 300 letters, and 500 sermons still preserved. His work, which covered subjects including theology, philosophy, and sociology, has had a lasting influence on the Christian world. Among his most significant writings are The City of God, De Doctrina Christiana, and Confessions. The respected bishop was also a compassionate vegetarian and drew attention to the lifestyle of those who not only abstained from flesh and wine, but also from other viands, which flattered taste. He also quoted St. Paul, It is better not to eat meat or drink wine, or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Today, we'll read excerpts from St. Augustine of Hippo's book, The City of God. In this selection, the saint elaborates on how demons on earth have obstructed humans' path to a blessed immortal life, and that Christ, the mediator, is the only way for a mortal being to be permanently uplifted to eternal happiness. Book 9, Chapter 14 Whether men, though mortal, can enjoy true blessedness, it is a great question among men whether man can be mortal and blessed. Some, taking the humbler view of his condition, have denied that he is capable of blessedness so long as he continues in this mortal life. Others, again, have spurned this idea and have been bold enough to maintain that even though mortal, men may be blessed by attaining wisdom. But if this be the case, why are not these wise men constituted mediators between miserable mortals and the blessed immortals, since they have blessedness in common with the latter and mortality in common with the former? Certainly, if they are blessed, they envy no one. For what more miserable than envy but seek with all their might to help miserable mortals on to blessedness, so that after death they may become immortal, and be associated with the blessed and immortal angels. Chapter 15 Of the Man Christ Jesus, the Mediator between God and Men. But if, as is much more probable and credible, it must needs be that all men, so long as they are mortal, are also miserable, we must seek an intermediate who is not only man, but also God, that, by the interposition of his blessed mortality, he may also bring men out of their mortal misery to a blessed immortality. In this intermediate, two things are requisite, that he become mortal, and that he do not continue mortal. He did become mortal, not rendering the divinity of the word infirm, but assuming the infirmity of flesh. Neither did he continue mortal in the flesh, but raised it from the dead. For it is the very fruit of his mediation that those, for the sake of whose redemption he became the mediator, should not abide eternally in bodily death. Wherefore it became the mediator between us and God, to have both a transient mortality and permanent blessedness, that by which is transient he might be assimilated to mortals and might translate them from mortality to that which is permanent. Good angels, therefore, cannot mediate between miserable mortals and blessed immortals, for they themselves also are both blessed and immortal. But evil angels can mediate, because they are immortal like the one party, miserable like the other. To these is opposed the good mediator, who, in opposition to their immortality and misery, has chosen to be mortal for a time, and has been able to continue blessed in eternity. It is thus he has destroyed, by the humility of his death and the benignity of his blessedness, those proud immortals and hurtful wretches, and has prevented them from seducing to misery 
by their boast of immortality, those men whose hearts he has cleansed by faith, and whom he has thus freed from their impure dominion. Man, then, mortal and miserable, and far removed from the immortal and the blessed, what medium shall he choose by which he may be united to immortality and blessedness? The immortality of the demons, which might have some charm for man, is miserable. The mortality of Christ, which might offend man, exists no longer. In the one, there is the fear of an eternal misery. In the other, death, which could not be eternal, can no longer be feared, and blessedness, which is eternal, must be loved. For the immortal and miserable mediator interposes himself to prevent us from passing to a blessed immortality, because that which hinders such a passage, namely misery, continues in him. But the mortal and blessed mediator interposed himself, in order that, having passed through mortality, he might of mortals make immortals, showing his power to do this in his own resurrection, and from being miserable to raise them to the blessed company from the number of whom he had himself never departed. There is then a wicked mediator who separates friends, and a good mediator who reconciles enemies, and those who separate are numerous, because the multitude of the blessed are blessed only by their participation in the one God, of which participation the evil angels being deprived. They are wretched, and interposed to hinder rather than to help to this blessedness, and by their very number prevent us from reaching that one beatific good, to obtain which we need not many but one mediator, the uncreated word of God, by whom all things were made, and in partaking of whom we are blessed. I do not say that he is mediator because he is the word, for as the word he is supremely blessed, and supremely immortal, and therefore far from miserable mortals. But he is mediator as he is man, for by his humanity he shows us that, in order to obtain that blessed and beatific good, we need not seek other mediators to lead us through the successive steps of this attainment, but that the blessed and beatific God, having himself become a partaker of our humanity, has afforded us ready access to the participation of his divinity, for in delivering us from our mortality and misery, he does not lead us to the immortal and blessed angels so that we should become immortal and blessed by participating in their nature, but he leads us straight to that trinity by participating in which the angels themselves are blessed. Therefore, when he chose to be in the form of a servant and lower than the angels, that he might be our mediator, he remained higher than the angels in the form of God, himself at once the way of life on earth and life itself in heaven. Chapter 17 That to obtain the blessed life, which consists in partaking of the supreme good, man needs such mediation as is furnished not by a demon, but by Christ alone. We need a mediator who being united to us here below by the mortality of his body, should at the same time be able to afford us truly divine help in cleansing and liberating us by means of the immortal righteousness of his spirit, whereby he remained heavenly even while here upon earth. Far be it from the incontaminable God to fear pollution from the man he assumed, or from the men among whom he lived in the form of a man, for though his incarnation showed us nothing else, these two wholesome facts were enough that true divinity cannot be polluted by flesh, and that demons are not to be considered better than ourselves because they have not flesh. This then, as scripture says, is the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, of whose divinity, whereby he is equal to the Father, and humanity, whereby he has become like us. Generous viewers, we thank you for your kind presence on today's words of wisdom 